Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to utilize the Nikon Snapbridge app to film yourself whether it's for photography or videography. We use this function a lot when we are traveling and needed someone to help us take our photo, especially in hotels where there's no one else. We were able to achieve results like this or you know this, I'm going to insert some photos with the help of this app and a tripod. Anyway, as a preface, I'm using a Nikon Z6 which is a fairly new camera so if you're using an older Nikon camera, it might not work for you or you might need additional accessories, so bear this in mind. I'm an Android guy and am currently using the Huawei P30 Pro. So to get it started, you need to first download and install the app from the Google Play Store. I would imagine the process is the same if you are using an iPhone. So I'm going to film the next session using my Osmo Pocket to demonstrate to you how it performs with the devices next to each other. The second step is after uh, installing the Snapbridge app, just open it up. I'm going to turn on my camera here. So as this is the first time the app is opening, so just follow the on-screen instructions, allow. Maybe I'll tilt it down a little bit so that you guys can see it. So it's saying that downloading image data for a new product, press yes or okay. Right, okay. So accept the application license agreement and press start. I'll just press it's showing some on-screen instructions. You can quickly go through it. So for my camera, obviously, it's the Z6. So I'm going to select this. To be honest, I never bothered with um, Bluetooth because I just find it quite um, finicky. Because if you want to use remote photography, actually, initially, it's um, connected to Bluetooth. And then when you want to swap to remote photography, it's swapped to, like, Wi-Fi connection. So I just didn't bother with um, Bluetooth. So what I'm gonna do is click Wi-Fi connection. So it's going to show you like where to go to on your camera to activate it. So the, the way it works is that you have to go to menu and go to setup, which is the um, spanner icon and go to um, connect to smart device. Then just go to Wi-Fi connection Establish Wi-Fi connection. So it will, it will, this screen will come up to say that the SSID is established and the password is there. So I will just need to click next. So what I'm going to do is go to Wi-Fi, refresh it and click on the SSID. So it's connected as you can see there. Um, go back to the app. And then right, I'm connected, so it should work. So it's saying now connected to the smart device. Click OK. So what you are going to do is literally click remote photography. And there you go. So I'm going to run through the um, functions on the on the screen quickly. The first things first, although the camera is set at um, manual dial, I'll show you quickly. Pan down. Right, you can see that the dial is set to manual and it is currently being shown It's currently being shown as manual here. You can actually change different modes. Let me pan up here. Right, different modes. See, although it's manual, I can actually change to aperture priority, shutter priority, or program priority. 
So this function is independent of what the camera is showing. I'm going to flip it back to manual because that's just how I shoot. Um, the 2M means 2 megapixel file will be downloaded once you've taken a photo. It's, it's actually in the settings, which I'm going to show you later. Um, 430 is the image count left on the memory card. That's the battery um, indicator status. Um, you can actually se select and adjust all the settings down here. The first one being shutter speed. You can see if I change it to one tenth of a second, it's going to overexpose. So I'm going to back to one fiftieth of a second. Um, the second one is the f-stop. You can select different f-stops. F8 is going to make it really dark, so I'm going to keep it to f4 because that's what the widest aperture this lens is allowing. Um, this one is exposure compensation. I generally underexpose my camera because um, for Nikon camera, it's easier to pull back the shadow than um, blown out the highlights where you can't recover much detail anymore if it's blown out. Um, next one is ISO. Let's go to 800 because it, it looks, you know, proper that way. Um, the last one is white balance. So once you've done that, you could go to settings. As I mentioned previously, there's this download free pictures um, settings. So you can select whether or not you want to download a picture after a photo is taken using um, this mobile phone. I've selected two megapixels because it's smaller size and the, the function that I'm going to use is only to use it as a preview to check exposure, focus, etc. So I don't really need um, raw format to be downloaded. I mean, people has been criticizing that it hasn't got dual cut slot. So if you want to play safe, you could actually um, select the original format. But bear in mind, um, the file size is going to be quite huge. So you have to, you know, bear that in mind. The live view is to show what's going on. See if you turn it off, it hasn't got live view. So you turn it on, so it's got live view. The second one, it's self timer. So I generally use this self timer quite a lot because it allows, it gives us more time to set into position um, before, you know, I click the shutter button. I generally leave it to three or five seconds. The next thing I'm going to show you is the autofocus. So the good thing is, let me swap to like um landscape so that you could you guys can see it better. Pan a little bit. So you could see right now for photog photography it allows touch to focus. See? Now it's focusing on the back. Let's focus something closer. Which is very good. So once I've set everything up, I can just click. Three, two, one, go. See, and it will download the photo back in. And store it in the mobile phone. For example, when I say that we use we use this function a lot when we are traveling for you know couple of photos in hotels, especially when there is no one else, we could achieve quite good results with a tripod and this um mobile phone. So normally, maybe I'll jump into the screen and show you guys. So normally, once the camera is set firm on firm on the tripod, I'll just take this. And then you could see what I'm doing now. So if I want, I could, let's, sorry, let's go to this side and I'll 
touch focus on my face you know and just and then the photo will be downloaded into your mobile phone so that's one way of us taking photos when there's no one else and when this thing is the camera is set on tripod I could literally move this and because this is connected um, using the Wi-Fi connection the distance is actually pretty good so I'm just gonna go back and show you the rest or maybe I'll just sit here then show you the rest of the um, the function using the um, video function so the next thing I'm going to do is click video and as you can see it stretches it and like for photo you can change all the settings underneath here you can see that including you know white balance etc the only thing that is missing is the touch to focus which is um, a bummer however um, what I generally do is I'm not sure whether you could see on the screen I've engaged like full-time autofocus um, con continuous full-time autofocus so the camera will actually focus on my screen when it detects a um, focus on my face when it detects a face or a subject so as you can see on the screen right now there is a box indicating the camera has detected my face and then it is focusing on my face so I think if I put it here see it will focus on my hands and then if I put it down it will focus on my face and as I said this is a pretty good um, function if you are um, for example a YouTube youtuber as well because you could actually set up the camera and put this somewhere like to the side and then once everything is set you just need to press you know start button and then you can use that as a monitor or if it's weird you could actually put it like this so that it's not in you know in the screen and you can click on the start button and you, you are looking at the um, camera and you could glance at the field the monitor quickly to check everything is okay um, and then you know start the recording so that is really really good one thing I would like to point out which I didn't forget to mention is for photograph for photo taking if you use the autofocus it needs to lock focus before it takes a photo so I'll show you quickly not so not so much in this example I'll, I'll see if I can um, emulate that so let's see if I click here let's okay it's it's not showing but basically but basically what I experience is that if it's in a dim environment the camera will have a hard time focusing so it will tend to focus hunt before it takes a photo so that is one problem and to mitigate that I tend to um, flip it to manual focus on the lens itself and then click the shutter button that way there is no focus hunt at all and there is no delay um, so better in mind hope you find this useful and as always feel free to like and consider subscribing if you like more content like this thank you bye